Hey, I'm Krabbitus, and welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. I waited. I waited. And now that I've gone back into the game, she's back. What do you think about this, Gunky? Pretty suspicious, if you ask me. I guess we'll leave. I'm sure nobody has possessed your body and come back with a different hairdo and decided to, you know, come kill me. Let's exit. She's still gonna be on that, right? I waited so long. And now she's on it. I'm so happy with myself that I waited. Is it the two of us? Wait, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Where is she? Oh. Yes! I think I did a good thing. If I left too early. Hey, stranger. I didn't think you were coming back. Sure was. Why wouldn't that be? Forgot her voice completely. People just keep dispers disappearing tonight. Well, here I am, dammit. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm just on edge. I'll be okay once I get away from this mine. How's it like? I can walk on it, but it's slow. Well, I'll try not to get too far ahead of you. Uh, you don't mind me, my hitching rat, do you? I kind of got a life out of here, and I, I wasn't sure if uh, when I'd be heading back, I, I can drive. Yeah, I can handle it. Okay, your decision. Uh, I still need to find a zero. Well, it's like I told you. Nothing, Weaver doesn't lie. I, uh, if she sent you here to find your on ramp, this is where you should be looking. Or maybe you just weren't listening closely enough. And that's not exactly what she said. I saw Weaver at my workshop. That's up north by Lake Nolan. Right at Wax and Pionia. In the back of Bait Shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. She's either up there or back of the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, let me know. Oh. How do I... I'm going to pick two people. And that means we go together. Could I just leave her there? After saying on the bringer? Come on, Homer. We got places to go. Do not think I'm cheating on you. Just because I put him up a little higher, you think I'm, you know... Mm, you, can't, you can see you smack me like I used to. I will smack you when I want to. Lynette's Antiques. I guess this is your truck. Surprised. It's kind of old. No, I, I'm not surprised. I just I guess it's an antique, too. I think it sits you. She just called us old. Oh, it's alright. I know I got a few wrinkles. How you doing, Homer? How's it going, Homer? Homer, this is Shannon. Nice to meet you, Homer. Nice. Oh, I can choose for Shannon. Nice to meet you, Homer. I've got some dried banana slices in my bag. Would you like them? I don't really like them anyway. I guess he didn't want these. No, no dried banana slices. They're pretty good. Dehydrated bananas. Pretty good. Although I prefer fresh bananas on toast with a little bit of butter. Mm, has to be real butter, though. Not that fake butter. Real, like, butter. You know what I'm saying? Kerrygold kind of butter. You know what I'm saying? Kerrygold. Irish butter. Yeah. Conway has places to go. Why are we talking like in third person now? Am I playing as Shannon? No. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's look at a little booklet real quick. Where's my... How do I look at my booklet? Yeah. Whoa, what was that? What was that? What's this? Rumbling tape, casket, scarecrow, punch him out, feeder. Okay. Alright. Um, directions from the marquee. Okay, we have to go to the farmhouse. Uh, head northeast on this ugly tree. Get back on 65, head north, then take the first right after the artificial limb factory. Okay, we have to go back to the farmhouse, so I think I remember where that is. That's like down here, somewhere. Hello! Aha, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the farmhouse. So we have to look for the not ghost lady. Yeah, I'm sure that's gonna turn out well. Uh, Miss Weaver, I'm. Um, I would care for some directions. I'm delivering some fucking antiques, I guess. Oh, one hell of a. F I'm dead. I am exhausted. I'm real. What am I delivering? Ming vases? What the heck's going on? Well, I guess I got a, another person with me now. Which is great. If I waited... If I didn't wait... 
Hey, kitty. How you doing? Cha. What you doing there? Swing and swang on your little taily. Oh, yep. Yeah, oh, I thought you stopped for a sec. Can I go up now? Can I go? Do I just keep going left? What am I doing here? Do I just keep going left? Oh my god, where am I going? Okay, it stops. Okay, that's fine. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that. I just want to put that out there. I was not okay with that. Cat, why didn't you move? Are you in on it? Are you with the trench coat, man? This is bullshit. How do I get up there? Oh, wait, hold on. Aha! Okay, there was a little bit of a little thing. Homer, what am I saying to you? There are some horses out there behind the house. Remember the horses you and the in our head? I miss them sometimes. The horses. Alright. Cool. Conway. Conway is a good name for like a... Like a con... Con artist. Right? Hey, I'm Conway. Don't you worry. I'll uh, make sure to put your money in a bank account and you'll be okie dokie. Yeah, that's right. Nice money in the bank. My bank account. What, my, I, what, what you mean? I didn't say anything like that. Actually, maybe he wouldn't be a great... Oh, what's happening? Wait. Wait, what's happening? Why are we just chilling? Why are we just well, sitting here, looking? Hello? Oh, okay, I guess we're... We're run, walking together now. Just gonna take a little sippy. A little sippy right there. A little sippy right there, that's right. Well, I'm just gonna look at it first. Come on, let's go. Why are the trees so boxy? Look at them. The family graveyard is set off to the side of the house. Headstones are inscribed with the surnames of the unfortunate. Yeah, okay, we've read that before. Can I? Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it two of us. There's nobody buried here. You know, it's decorative, I guess. Or it's art or something. I don't know. A decorative graveyard? Maybe folks were like that. Not morbid, I mean, but strange. Carols with tragic ideas. Oh, and look at that headstone. Marquez. I you think that was for our parents. No, I don't know. Okay. So they're just there for, for show? There's no actual bodies down there? I mean, if she's got... If the, if the ghost is gonna be anywhere. It has to be here, right? Weaver! Darling! Terribly sorry to intrude on your ghostly habits. Habitat, should I say. But, um, I need directions to Dogwood. Ah, oh, great, she's not here. Of course not. Alright, what are we doing now? What are we do now, huh? Oh, this is where she was. Yeah, that makes sense. This is where Weaver and her parents left. They took out a bunch of loans, you know, and had this place built. Do you have any debts? I never really had any collateral. Something to be, something to be said for that, I guess. My parents were like that until the company store found a way to get to them. For my dad, it was tokens to run the fans and air purifiers. For my mom, it was counteries. Two solutions for the same problem. They were sure sounded different. We were had that too. A lot of it. All tuition. How did she pay it off? She didn't. She had no income. None of them did. I think eventually we were put those math skills to work on all the red numbers in the family checkbook and got a clear sense of just how hopeless the situation was. Yeesh. So she left. I guess she just drove away in the middle of the night. They woke up in the morning and the car was gone. She never came back. Until tonight. Someone else told me to come here and talk to her. Huh. Okay. I guess we two aren't the only ones she's been talking to. I don't remember that weird guy at the gas station, but he might have something more to do with this little mystery. Oh, that's not something you see every day. That old TV right there, well, that is a damned antique for you. I had a mall like that in the shop once, and I had to sell it off to make rent. The most painful decision I ever made. It was her TV. The guy had the TV for her to give to Weaver. 
but it was Shannon's, which is her sister. What's going on here? Say, do you mind if I open it up? Looks like the dials are all color core corroded, and the screen is leaking light a little bit. Come on, I bet life said it would never forgive you for letting a specimen like that fall into despair. Uh, I guess she wouldn't. But I think by now she's gonna think I'm dead. Because I've been here way too long. Alright, come on. Do the do the thing. Shannon's kinda got a booty, don't she? Not bad, not bad. I'm gonna take a little sippy right there. I'm gonna take a little sippy right there. Come on, trimming that ass. Oh yeah. These tubes are all messed up. Look like they've been in a swamp or a cave or something. There's moss growing on this one. I'm sorry, what? That's okay. I have a few spares in my bag here. Here, I pulled this one out of an old computer monitor. Just needs to be red calibrated a little bit. Ah, uh, okay. That oughta... Should be seeing something on now. Seeing anything? Hey, that looks dangerous. What are you doing there? Damn, okay. Uh, yeah, look, I think the contacts are dirty. Now, don't go tell my customers I clean off old vacuum tubes with spit. There, just uh, turn it north south and... Well, you spit on things, huh? You nasty! I don't... This TV is kind of weird. I don't much important on TV. It just comes to life. <laughs> just people start doing it in the field. Oh! It looks like my truck! What the heck's going on? Is that a horse? Alright. Horsies. I like a little horsey. I'm gonna give you a little pet and give you a sugar cube. Maybe a carrot, if you're lucky. What's happening? Do I control this? What? Come here, Skunky! What do you think, huh? Oh! Would you look at that? And then it backed one. We're not done yet, though, are we, Skunky? No, we're not. No, we're not. Limits and demonstrations. Let's do it! Let's go. Come on, Skunky, get back in order. There you go. All right. Okay. Limits and demonstrations. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, are we in the TV now? What's happening? Limits and... Wait, what? Hold up, I'm not... Conway anymore? Am I Shannon? Limits and demonstrations. A Lola Chamberlain perspective. Making the first major public showcase of her work in over 20 years. This retrospective exposition of work by pioneering installation artist Lola Chamberlain comprises a diagonal slice through time, place, and form. The pieces on display were individually debuted over a period of 35 years, designed in Chamberlain's various homes and studios between her beloved Mexico City and her native Elizabeth home. Just like pictures of her cat or something. <laughs> oh, there was a range of scale, impact from the intimate warmth of vertex texture fetch to the infamous visage, the latter of which requires a vertical clearance of over 30 feet, and her cat playing with a laser pointer. Yet these works share a confounding legacy in each of their debut expositions. They are nearly impossible to install. Well, cats always fuck around. You're not going to be able to get them sit for a while. Galleries and museums backed at the scale, power requirements, and the highly skilled labor involved in maintaining these works for display. Some of their debuts collapsed under the weight of logistics, only to be successfully executed much later. And so, as they describe the outer limits of Chamberlain's range and as an installation artist, the geographic ledges and the vestiges of her iterate home life and the beginning and the end of her distinguished career that her works on display, her are also traces of extreme to her capability and the front hairs of her head is both from the and next position. A recap of you these works as they are meant to be viewed or to even want to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That'd be like, I don't know if you ever see ads, if you're, if you ever see an Irish ad, and it's like, 
Oh, for death, just get a little bit of gravy on that chicken, you know what I mean? Oh, fucking yeah. Oh, yeah. Look. I may be Irish born, but by God. It's just one of those voices I just, I don't like. I just don't like it. Come at me. Same with the English accent. Some English accents just, all right, yeah. You do all right. <laughs> you do all right, yeah. I can't do it. I just can't deal with it. I'm sorry. I love you. But I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Come at me. Just do it. Come on. Do it to me. What a, what a lonely image. Oh, no. What a lonely image. <laughs> image on the screen or the whole thing? On the screen, that coin. I would look at that coin too. And I can't really tell what kind of coin it is. My uncle used to collect coins. Did I tell you that? It was crazy with him. Really a person. This coin actually doesn't look real. I think it's plastic. Nice use of the materials. Mm, I guess so. I guess I'm Emily. Maybe I should give her a different voice. Maybe I'll give her a thick cockney accent. How about that? That'd be fun. What are you swinging and swagging for? I don't care about that. What is this place? Also, I'm sorry if I offended anybody, but if you're, you know... If you're cool, you're cool. That's all I'm saying. If you're cool, that's all you need to be. You just need to be cool. No matter what you sound like or what you do, just be cool, okay? Be cool. What is this? Title card. Visage, 1984. Unknown media. What is it made of? It's a mystery. Looks like ribbon bandages out. Have you seen the Invisible Man? It's a... Uh, it's last of Visage, Bill of Visage. P puzzle to its owner. What? It's a poem I read. I think it was written by a computer. Sounds like it. <laughs> Alright, what's this? Oh, it's just the... Wait... Are we just going in a circle? Wait, okay, hold on. We are just going in a circle, but... Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Title card. Overbued Namjoon Park insulation in the style of Edward Packer. 1964, 1973, 1880. Magnetic tape, handheld tape playback, head speaker system, voice of the artist, computer synthesized speech. Oh, I read about this one. It's interactive. How's that work? It's a bunch of old tape. Uh, you, you run this tape. Playback and head it along and just listen to the recordings, I guess. Let's try it out. I think you start in the middle. As Bob drags the playback head along the table, a woman's voice issues unsteadily from the speakers. We start in the middle. Donald and Joseph are in the hallway. I'm in the office. The walls are lined with filling cabinets. A few drawers hang open. The door is ajar. A massive computer looms in this corner. There are some bunch cards on the floor. A standard voice recording is <laughs> placed so quickly into the tape. List out options in monotone. To examine cards, rotate 30 degrees and advance 7 inches. To leave room, uh, rotate 17 degrees. Advance four inches to activate computer. Rotate 200 degrees and advance 15 inches. Examine cards. Bob moves playback and head to another strip of tape. Echo encoded in the holes punched through these cards is a first draft of a poetic soup system. I can't read. Punch cards by sight. Donald can. I think. Anyway. This version was pretty underwhelming. To leave room, rotate 17 degrees and advance 4 inches. To activate computer, rotate 200 degrees and advance 15 inches. Activate computer. <laughs> Bob moves playback head to an old strip of tape. So loud. I'm loving. I am now holding two punch cards. On one of them, Joseph has scribbled a note. Caves. The other is blank. To insert Caves card, rotate 11 degrees and advance 2 inches. To insert blank card, rotate 95 degrees and advance 14 inches. Caves card! We are on a dirt trail in the park. Or, well, it's not really a trail. It's a trail. It's more like a 
like a tendency. They tend, they tend to be fewer plants here on the path we've been talking, walking. Now we're walking at the edge of a massive hole. The dirt gives way to a mossy rock as the ground sinks into the darkness. Joseph and Donald are following a rope down into the cave. They have computer equipment tied to their backs. So do I. Door into the cave. Rotate 65 degrees. Left and advance four inches. Enter the cave. That's the last trip. So everything's down here now. The final resting place. Don't be so morbid. To remember a font gesture, rotate 180 degrees, advance 33 inches, to regret a harsh word, rotate 12 degrees and advance 6 inches. Remember? It's a morning now. I'm in the car now. I'm driving to work. This is the last recording I'll make on this tape. And then I'll drop it in the mail tomorrow. Then who knows? I've been recording onto this tape for... 15 years, I think, a lot of other things happened. So here's the story, when I met Donald and Joseph, they were both students, and I was in the band performing on campus, they came to my show, and then we met at some bar, had a few drinks together, Joseph wanted to impress me, and he stole the metal cocktail, uh, and Tumblr and give it to me, <laughs> here we kicked it out, water drunkenly, until morning, and finally ended up at a diner. Now I use the tumbler to store extra pens on my desk. So I'm almost out of tape. I guess I'll just let it run out when I drive. No instructions. Now I think that's the end of the strip tape. I don't think we've reached this long on the top of here before. Uh, there's a chain to skip over there. I won't tell a soul. I won't tell a soul. <laughs> I can't even do the voice anymore. Bob moves the play black head through the nurse strip tape. Think of your work. Our research. You'll die in these damned old games. And what about those men? You know they'll come back. We'll go deeper. That's all. They'll never find us. Did you hear their voices? They're not. They'll find you. Not me. I'm going back to the, to the surface. Stop. Your stupid fight is ringing through the whole damn cave. Joseph is right. We can't stay here. I'm leaving too. But I'm not going back to the surface. I'm taking my station wagon and heading back to the zero. You'll be lost forever. But we need your voice for the machine. It only recognizes your voice. I'll send you this tape when I'm recording. I'll put it in the mail, and then you see what your damn machine does with it. Oh. I think we'll leave this one here, future person. Yep, we're gonna leave this one here, future person. I think we got pretty far, and I don't know what to expect from this. I was delivering stuff from my antique store to wherever. Someone was ordering an antique, clearly, because I'm freaking ordering an antique to somewhere, so clearly somebody ordered an antique. And I'm finding it very difficult to get there. So for now, I hope you enjoyed, future person. And my advice to you, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. So do some smiling, baby, and I'm going to see you in the next one.